Hokey dokey. In this problem, we are given a function that looks a little wild, and we are asked to find its derivative. So, this problem is introducing a method known as the product rule. So, feel free to take a picture or screenshot of this right now. This is the product rule that we will be using to find the derivative of this. The product rule is used when we are finding the derivative of functions that have two expressions that both have the variable and they are being multiplied together. So this is a z termed expression, so z, z expression, and then this is a z expression, and these z expressions are being multiplied together. So another word for the product rule would be the multiplication rule, something like that. So the idea is if we can split it up as some a times some b, in other words, a times some b, then we can find the derivative by finding a prime, the derivative of the first part, and b prime, the derivative of the second part, and then kind of arranging all the terms or expressions in this way. So let's jump right into it. Again, we know that a is that first half, that first z term. We know that b is the second half, the other z term. And what we need are a prime and b prime, the derivatives of each of these. And so starting with a, using what we know about chain rule and other derivative rules, we have a negative 11 out in front, so that'll stay out in front. The derivative of e to the 2z, or e to the anything, is e to the anything. So we have e to the 2z in the exponent still, but then using chain rule, we need to multiply what we have by the derivative of the exponent, the inside. The derivative of 2z is 2. So then the derivative of sine of anything is cosine of that same anything. So cosine of z squared in this case. But then chain rule says we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So 2z. And this is all we need. Now that we have these, <clears throat> we will arrange them in this format and we will have our answer. So we always, always start product rule or something called quotient rule that we'll cover next with a prime. A prime is always the start. So negative 11. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and multiply this negative 11 and this 2 to get negative 22 e to the 2 z. That's a prime. Now we want b. Well, b was our sine of 2 z. Whoops. Sine of 2, or sorry, of z squared. Got distracted. And then we have a plus. Let's go ahead and just write them, huh? So a was negative 11 e to the 2 z. And then our last one is b prime, which is the entire thing we just found here. So we have cosine of z squared all times 2z. All right, so we are looking for these two paired together plus these two big terms paired together. So let's check out our options. All right, something to mention, a big tip is product rule always has two pairs of expressions, uh, you know, multiplied together, but then being added together. So what we have are two big terms being added together. Option A has three terms being added or subtracted together. So it would never be an answer like A. And D just has one big term, so it would never be an answer like D. And so we're between these because we have two terms that are either added or subtracted together. A big thing that helps us distinguish between our right and wrong answers are the coefficients. In this big term, the only numbers we have out in front are negative 22, or the only number is negative 22. In this big term, we have negative 11, and we also have, if we look very closely, this 2. I know these 2s and Zs are not very kind on the eyes, but when we multiply, negative 11 and 2, 
we get negative 22. So we're looking for the answer that has two big terms with negative 22. So just based on those coefficients, we should be able to identify our answer. And then, of course, we could verify that all the other terms match. So let's see if we can do that. We have negative 22. We have an e to the 2z, e to the 2z, and a sine of z squared, a sine of z squared. So first term looks good. And then the second term, we have the negative 22. We have the e to the 2z, e to the 2z. We have a z, which matches this z. And then, of course, the cosine of z squared is here. So again, the coefficients can help you find your answer. But of course, it might be helpful to confirm that all the other terms are there. All right. Any questions on this? Let's see. All right. Hopefully there's no questions, but I'm, sorry, I'm in tutoring mode. All right, so let's go ahead and do one more example. I know it's going to be a long video, but I'd rather do two examples in one. Product rule is this stuff here. So we're going to bring this down. And what we'll do actually is jump right into the derivatives. So f prime, we will start by doing a prime times b plus a times b prime. So what we can do, since b is here and a is here, we could just go ahead and fill those in, and we'd have half of our answer done right off the bat. So keep in mind, a is the first half, b is the second half. b is ln of x cubed, and then a is 11e to the 2x. So we already have half of our answer done, which is convenient. Can we cancel any answers just based on that? Well, it's not going to be one term. It's not going to be one, two, three terms. So just like that, we already have half of it done. Half of our answer is eliminated. There's ways of breaking this down. All right, let's keep it going. So a prime is the derivative of 11e to the 2x. 11e to the 2x has a derivative of 11e to the 2x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the exponent, 2. b prime is the derivative of ln of x cubed. And so ln of x cubed, ln of anything, has a derivative of 1 over that anything. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The inside is x cubed. x cubed has a derivative of 3x squared. This is our derivative. Again, let's use that coefficient method we did in the last one. Across this whole term, what numbers can we multiply? We have 11 and we have 2. So 22, again. Across this whole term, we have an 11 and it looks like we have a 3. So 33, do we see an answer with 22 and 33? We do. And so we break out the eraser to see that A is our answer. And so coefficients can be very helpful. Again, I know these are super crazy problems because they combine product rule and chain rule. So you, you want to make sure that having little chain rule derivatives isn't going to mess you up. So make sure to practice those as much as you know you can. I, these are super hard problems to start uh, learning product rule with. So if they're tricky right now, that's okay. But you know, try to get the basics. Maybe start with other example problems online, honestly, uh, or get other video help on YouTube. Something. These are not easy problems to learn product rule with. So if they're you know kicking your butt, don't sweat it. But try to start small. Use what you know. Eliminate what you can. Um, and focus on the little things rather than the entire, like matching all the terms to all the terms here and so on. There's ways to break them down. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know.